Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome once again. I think this is session number three in this series where we started uh, building project uh, on the Kubernetes uh, platform. So uh, how do we proceed? I was just thinking to set a bit of agenda. We'll, we'll discuss with the uh, project specific uh, updates. Uh, any uh, questions you have to start with, any sort of anybody has achieved the objectives, what two objectives were from last time. And I hope you guys are watching the recordings uh, maybe multiple times if needed for any clarification. A lot of people still keep asking what are the tasks for the week? What are the activities to be done? So everything we uh, discuss in the meeting and everything gets put in, in the um, slide deck and everything in the video recording. So uh, do watch that uh, if required, like a few times maybe. So let's discuss with updates from your side. Uh, any Anybody wants to talk about what they achieved Maybe two or three people can can show if they want to discuss, like, are they able to achieve and what those two tasks were. <clears throat> yeah. Hello, sir. May I start? Yeah. Hello. Yes, Agar. Yes. So what were the two tasks that we were to work on? Actually, first of all, what I did, actually, uh, I have created a uh, one branch in Git. Okay, I was used uh, Nginx web server, web server, basic that was uh, image, basic code. And uh, by default, it was a uh, uh, master branch. So I have created uh, two namespaces in cluster uh, that was main and master and dev. Okay. okay. And uh, when I pushed the code uh, from the Git to GitHub, then Argo CD automatically sync the code and okay. it will deploy it to the uh, particular namespace. If I suppose I uh, I uh, push the code from the uh, from the dev uh, branch, so uh, Argo CD will uh, create. Already, I have created two applications in Argo CD in uh, as a dev and yeah, as right. a master. Right. So it will uh, it will uh, directly uh, deploy to the particular namespace in the cluster. That was a successful task, but uh, what happened? I got the one question because I couldn't able to uh, access uh, to that container which I, which uh, successfully deployed on the that code particular. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't uh, access uh, that container from the outside. That was my simple question. Okay. Otherwise, uh, task was successfully done. And uh, can, you show this, can you show this demo to everyone? Actually, uh, I have I haven't started yet uh, because it will uh, 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 it will take a fifteen minutes around. So I don't I didn't un uh, know that uh, if I wanted to show then this is uh, this is that opportunity right where we show yeah. everyone what we have accomplished. If okay, uh, uh, I I will uh, uh, create that then after half an hour. Uh, I will yeah. show you. We can have the demo, correct. Yeah, let's do that. Let me... Uh, I, have, I have completed, so let me share my screen. I can show. Perfect. Let's let's watch. Uh, Pradeep, you, you were talking, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just show up on the camera if possible, so we can... Yeah, but I'm getting host to disabled screen sharing. Okay. Oh, yeah. One second. Every time that has to be started... Yeah. <clears throat> Just to, you know, people are able to achieve at least till this stage. I'm sure people can proceed further also, but at least until those two tasks, let's see if, if you know, we have made progress. And if you guys show it, it will probably inspire others to focus on and get on track. People like, 100 plus people signed up and Rava is only 36 participants. So yeah, a bit of interest goes down with time. And I think once you start accomplishing tasks, that is the real benefit you get. So that is that is when you will only be able to appreciate the project and the 
uh, the intent behind it. Let's uh, over to you, Pradeep. Yeah, thanks. Try to explain step by step also, like, was there a challenge? How you, where did you took help? Did you use any AI tool or anything that, you know, that, that helped? Because when we are working at job, no one asks us, you know, how, how you did this activity. No one will question that. It's the tools that you are, your company is using. Use those tools, take help from colleagues, take help from AI or any other sources and just yeah. Google it or just, just get it done. That That is the intent. They will explain you the requirements, uh, expect you to follow the process. Is my screen visible now? No, not yet. How can I share my complete screens, all screens? Is it just me? I can't see. Uh, I'm just a thing. I'm just trying to identify how can I share my all the screens, means all uh, full screen. There must Entire. be a window section. I'm getting desktop one, Google, Chrome. Yeah, you can click desktop one. That will show you entire screen. Yeah, okay. Desktop one, I'm saying. I'm getting only desktop one. Go for it. Bring your screen like this. Yeah, and then you need to, to click the share button on the lower right corner, I believe. After you click desktop one. Okay, yeah. Is it, is it refreshing now? Yeah, yeah. You can see now. Okay, so I just deploy the guest book. This is a sample uh, app. Uh, so I just try to deploy it. And I'll show you this. This is the uh, Argo CD. I created uh, two, three apps and uh, combined in you know, one app. So I'll share the repo also. Did you use the user interface to create the apps? No, no, through YAML file, I have done it. Perfect. Perfect. So I'll show the, all the YAML files. So here, actually, I have created apps like app one and app two. Then I combined both the app in app and uh, just like a staging environment, I have in a staging environment, I have app. And in this app, I have multiple applications. So I just took the sample for app one and app two. And this both are combined in a staging environment. So this is just like a three app means two in, in the staging is the environment. And in this staging environment, there are two applications. So what is the difference between app one, app two? They use different image. Yes. One is using uh, NGNX and one is using guest book. Okay. Can you explain a little bit on these files? Uh, like yes. Deployment.yaml yeah. for app one. Sure. And sure. namespace and service. Yeah. So first file is a namespace. Here we are just creating a separate namespace for this application. Right. Like bar is the namespace. And I'm using the same namespace. In this namespace, I'm deploying this application. So here is the deployment. And this is the application name. Mm -hmm. And I'm using the same namespace. Right. In the specification, I am just creating three replicas just right. for test purpose. Right. Initially, I tested with one replica. Okay. And then, so this is just a template. And here, I am running the container from this image, guest book demo. So if we have any other image, we can replace here the path, like our pet clinic. Right, exactly. So That's next week, this. we will change to pet clinic. Yes, once we will replace this, it will deploy the that application. Okay. And I just provided, because I am doing this uh, as of now, I did it with Minikube, but uh, I'll create the EKS cluster with the Terraform. So I'll just deploy on EKS cluster. So Perfect. these so are the files. So these are very nice uh, uh, limits and everything you have specified. So any of your container will stay within this limit. Yes. And after deployment, I have created the service file as well. Yeah. So in this service file, I'm using node port. 
so this node port the service is running on 80 port and after node port mapping i can access with this at 80 port and this is internal uh, node port mapping Pradeep, can, can i interrupt once a small yes. doubt yes uh, can you go back to the deployment.yaml yes and the resource section that you have given uh, that is it the persistent volume concept no, 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 no. This is a limit for your CPU utilization and memory. This is for system, system RAM and others. This is a limit. The, for... the container will be limited to those. Resources. Yes, Cont container will use that much memory from your uh, system. Cannot go beyond it. It's a good uh, practice to set these limits, basically. Yes. Okay. So this is this is saying that one container will have 64 uh, MB of RAM and 250 milli of your uh, CPU space. So if you have one core CPU, you can put four okay. such uh, containers basically. Yeah. That so that sort of thing. So basically, if you if you are provisioning a server which has two, four, whatever number of CPUs, you know that at max, this will have seven, eight, or 10, or whatever. It's a simple math thing after that, that you can put yeah. these many containers. And mm -hmm. actually, I give this minimum because I'm running three replica and I'm running two applications. So there are four containers at a time running and services and others also. So after deployment, okay. Okay. yeah. So once uh, we map with the service, like node port. So this is after doing this, I just uh, run the kubectl port forwarding. And once port forwarding done, then I was able to access this app with the local host with the new port where I apply the port forwarding. Can we see this in the Argo CD? Like uh, how did you yes. how did you yes. deploy first of all? So what happens is when, once you set up everything, you will have this uh, blank like there won't be any application on this so i'll do one thing i'll remove it and you i'll deploy do all these it. things yeah that's the yeah i can right it doesn't take uh you can remove from ui also if you want to no i have created the script so i'll delete from the script itself okay so i just run it from So actually, this is deleting the app. Yeah. And it will delete my containers as well. So see, now it's deleted from here. So now this is blank Argo CD that we configured. And those are those steps were anyway there in the document. This was the easiest part. You have yes. your Argo CD installed in the cluster and you expose the Argo CD on port 8080 localhost. So you, and then there are some steps like, I think in the slide deck, there was a uh, uh, some steps to get the admin ID and ad admin password, which is base 64 encrypted. You just take that. So that was in one of the slide. So we are only until that level now. Yeah. So now if I, uh, uh, I want to deploy it through YAML file, I'll just apply it. So we are saying Kubernetes apply uh, a specific application dot YAML, which we just went through. It has Nginx and it has uh, another pod uh, that was for uh, guestbook. guestbook application. Eventually, yes. that will be replaced by another uh, uh, pet yeah, clean correct. container. So, yes. And I have just started from here. So if we will come here, see, now all the applications are deployed and we can see. So let's suppose I want to check for this application. Let's go to here. It will so the uh, application and then the deployment steps then the uh, these these are the namespace name here are the deployments and here are the pods can you reduce the number of pods to, from three to two I'll, I'll do one thing yeah i'll do one thing i'll i'll open this one in this i have only one pod 
Yeah, but we want to see uh, that we increase this to two, maybe. We want to see that we apply okay. changes okay. in the... Uh, sure, sure. Uh, I'll do it. Then I'll it, do it. Although it takes a bit of I'll time. Do, I'll do two things. Actually, let me go to the repo and I'll change this number itself here. Yeah. So like application two, we have replica one. I'll change it to replica two. I'll edit this file. Yeah. So I just added this one. Okay. I'm not doing anything else. It will automatically deploy. So let me go to here. Our GitOps uh, Argo CD is monitoring this repository. Yeah. And it will. See, now it's deployed. Let me go to the application. So we deploy it so here. Let me sync it. It takes uh, around three, four minutes, I think, the yes. default uh, sync time, because if it does like real time, it will uh, choke the servers and may have network uh, implications. So default, it syncs every three minutes. Now we have forcefully uh, synced it. And we haven't seen the effect yet. Uh, yeah, it's, it's still taking time. See, now it is reflecting two pods are created. Something is not right. Yeah, so why it is deleting? <laughs> it does try uh, to, but it's I not think... able to bring the second uh, node successfully. Um, maybe because of the memory limits. Probably limit uh, uh, issues. Uh, for other application, I might to have Mm, you have to. that's why i was saying reduce it from three to two because then it will definitely go through yeah, yeah i'll do an, i'll change it again <clears throat> that's one so i have reduced this and in f2 still we have two Let it, be Let it be two. We'll see okay. if that comes to. Okay. Sure. And so here we did it for one. So here, see, it is reduced now to one. To one. Okay. Earlier there were three. Yeah. Now I'll go to the this application. And we will refresh it. Yeah, so see, now both are running. See, there was no memory. That's what actually one pod was started four minutes earlier, or another once the memory is free. So the another is started just a few seconds back. So there is there is limit, right? You, you can only fit these many uh, containers. Pods. You have to reduce and then you have to you can increase. Uh, so all this planning uh, goes into selecting the based on how many uh, containers you can fit in your application specific containers uh, based on that what should be the node size that you should have so you can utilize the every CPU of the machine. Yeah, I'll show you one more thing actually like nginx image I have the 10th version. Okay, so if everything is already there then. I'll just upgrade. Uh, I'm creating the new NGNX image. I just written one small script. What it will do, it will create a new image with version 11 and upload to Docker Hub. And from Docker Hub, this, this uh, script will take the latest code from our Git repo and replace the Docker image. And once the Docker image is replaced and committed, then the, this will automatically deploy. So I'm deploying with 11 number version. So it is just creating the image. Uh, so while you... Yeah. After updating the image to the Docker, it replaced the Docker image in version in our Git repo also. Okay. 
Can so you show where, where did we make yeah. changes in, in the Git? Yeah, yeah. So now if I see. So now both the pods are up and running. If we see the details, now the version is still it is not refreshed. It should be not six minutes ago, right? It should be very recent. But yeah, just ref close this. Uh, okay. Just give it time. Yeah. Okay. This part just came. Same issue, compute issue. You don't have enough space for a CPU memory, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm, it's 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 now it's replaced from here to here, so now it's should. Uh, so I have a base very basic confusion in it. Yeah, so this is a deployed. Yeah, you can go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you I have very basic uh confusion in it. Like mm -hmm. what I have completed till now, I am just explaining that uh, uh I have just uh, uh dockerize our pet pet clinic application and uh, uh made CI CD pipeline to push the image on Docker. This uh, from a uh, uh, till this uh, till this stage I have completed, okay. and uh, when I came to uh, our GitOps part, so I, I use Minikube cluster. And uh, install uh, uh, Argo, C uh, Argo CD uh, inside our cluster. Right. And I ha I have deployed a I have created a separate uh, uh, GitHub GitHub repository for our manifest files. And I use a simple uh, voting application that I have earlier used in my some projects. Okay. And uh, I uh, uh, post all the manifest file in those uh, repository in that repository. Right. And I just synchronize the thing. Till, till this stage and uh, things are also working correctly like right. it or to uh, face the changes from the github repository and synch synchronize to our um, right. Right. okay so the the problem i am uh, uh, the conf my confusion is the uh like in actual industry we have a, a different staging environment like we have a testing environment we have deployment environment so uh what i can i am not understanding here what i have to do like uh, i have to create a a, a separate first namespace in our cluster for uh, development environment, testing environment, and what are the different staging in environment that can be, Correct. and uh, and uh, uh, inside GitHub repository, what I have to do to create separate uh, folders, we can say for all these stages, or we have to create separate repositories for all these stages. Separate branches, maybe. We decided okay. we'll use separate branch for different code. So there are different ways to do it. There is okay. no uh, such thing that this is the only way to do it. Okay. The, the industry way, the perfect way probably would be to use different cluster altogether all for your... Can you go on mute, please? Uh, we probably would be to use unique uh, cluster for your dev staging prod environments. Completely isolated so you can play around with your dev and QA and staging environments and still not impact the production application. Uh, your branching and merging, all that strategies all depend on your organization. They want to deploy from the master branch or they want to deploy from a release branch and that sort of thing. So we, we just, in this project, we want to ensure that you understand that you can use different branches to deploy to different clusters, but just to save some cost, we will deploy to sync same cluster itself, but in different namespaces. So we will have okay. we will have a namespace called dev and we will have a namespace called prod. Prod will be deployed from the main or master branch and dev will be deployed from a dev branch. So any changes you make, for example, now, uh, Pradeep was showing uh, changes yes. to main branch and that, that was reflecting. If he is making changes to dev branch alone, then only the dev namespace application should be updated, not the main and vice versa. If you are if you are merging your changes to the main branch, then main branch should be picked up by Argo CD and you can define that the name and uh, the branch name, etc. 
Okay. Right. So that that's what we will follow. Now, uh, Pradeep, is it possible? Yeah. Uh, for you to show that we again delete the uh, apps, but people, okay. uh, where is that uh, uh, that you deployed your application? Right. You would have followed. Yeah. Uh, how you link your Git repository with Argo CD? And okay. Yeah, got it. I'll explain. So what happens is that you usually you may not. Uh, so for example, let's delete these apps once more. Uh, okay. And okay. Uh, how people can probably do is instead of using source code to uh, deploy your application, you can first synchronize your Argo CD with from the user interface itself. And that should give you the source code required for your application to work. Let's, let's delete this. Yes, well, let's, I have now you just it. say create application on the, or not here. Okay. From, from here? Yeah, from here. So you okay. say uh, new app, give an application name maybe, app, give a project name, say whether you want automated uh, sync, but again, this automatic will have a uh, limit, like it will have some wait time. Then you profile, provide your Git repository. Uh, what about preparing for tough technical? Provide Ads. <laughs> I'll take this repo. Yeah, so just, uh, Take the git URL. Yeah. Whatever your repository is, just take that. Yeah. And take me the yes, I'll do one thing. I was changing just one more thing because uh, all both the application running on the same port, so I'll just change the port number here. Okay. okay. Get it. So okay. I just took the URL. Now I'll put the URL here. Now so one case in case you are using your dev deployment, then specify the name of the branch. Instead of head, you will say maybe dev. And in case of uh, prod, you will say uh, the specific branch name. In this yes. case, they, in yeah, case, they have got main, so it didn't show up, but you will see other branches. If... Right. So I'll give the path. Here. Now this path is for the actual application deployment file, which is containing your, uh, the deployment of the service, your pods and other stuff. So right now we are using Nginx and a uh, guest book, but this will eventually be replaced by your application uh, specific thing, which is pet clinic. So we are saying that uh, this Git, this Argo CD is now hooked to this Git repository in the main branch and once you see the changes happening in the environments slash staging slash apps deploy from this location, basically any file, any YAML file on this location will be deployed. Environment yes. slash staging slash apps in your specific repository. It could be different for you if you want to. And cluster URL is usually the same uh, default. It will automatically uh, destination uh, cut. Uh, the... Yeah, so actually I'm not giving because I have given all these. Yeah, this, this we have to select. Default. Uh, yes. And, and namespace I'm not giving because I have already passed this namespace in my YAML files. Perfect. Yep, that's it. Now you create this once. Just create this. application oh, i'm not sure why this is not able to read this path there are so, spaces there are there must be some space there in your uh, okay yes yeah let's create. now you got this uh, now you click on uh, say app one uh, okay. Yeah, uh, just click on this one, app one logo or something. Yeah. Yeah, this one. And click on app details at the 
left left uh, top app details click on manifest tab at the top and take this uh, as reference so copy this so this is basically your way of you can take this file now because you are deploying through uh, this process so just copy this maybe you will have to add additional uh, stuff and now you can show you you bring this file again just uh, yeah this is how you generate manually first time because you will not have this application uh, dot yaml available to you you have to add additional things to it at the top you have to specify deployment and other stuff as well yes. so you can maybe now you can show your file which you used uh, for uh, deploying your application yes so this is how basically we generate first time because uh, if you start putting your source code up front and start to deploy your application any errors and all you may not like we saw the error uh, on the screen it was very evident that there is some issue and there is a sync, sync issue and all that so once that is successful then you can bring that source code if you do it directly through source code you will have to discover those errors in a slightly hard way and uh, so see uh, anything above spec is what he has to uh, write this this is an extra default uh, code that we have to specify uh, and then so this is just an app name but uh, the whatever the app we just want yeah. and this is name space for argo cd where we want to deploy and this this is just a final line this step is added because if we are deleting the app from the argo cd it will make sure the first all the containers are deleted then the app will delete app will be deleted perfect and this is the code that we got from this, uh, that yes. uh, process that we followed yeah this is the code that we got from the process which we did and this is just a policy like we want to validate through this is just a policy details. even if you don't have this policy or anything it, yeah it, it's, it's not mandatory even Without... if you don't have that finalizers and all that still it will uh, at least deploy but yeah we will we'll progressively work so all these are extra step in the template yeah, I'll, I'll show you the first one so because i use that other one now if you did not spend time this week learning all this then it would be you know it will not make complete sense so it, it, you will have to okay. watch this, this, again. this, this yeah this much will work this much this yes. so here this we got from the application itself and this was just added metadata kind and appear yes. so this is how we uh, get the actual application file now we will deploy from this file not we will get rid of the uh, that user the interface thing yes. that's how that's how everything is connected Anyone has any other question? How we can limit the number of users to access it through IEM rules? Uh, means I don't want to get into, I mean, everyone should not be accessing the same file which I am using. So using that IEM role is the only option available where I can limit the number of users access. Number of users on what, like Argo so, CD, GitHub, or suppose my team is using this. Only five people in the team should use it, and the other people should not. So that is your role-based access on the yeah, okay. Kubernetes uh, cluster level. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So you are talking about the cluster Kubernetes cluster access or Git access because here we have multiple things like Docker Hub, Git, and Argo CD as well as the Kubernetes cluster. Four things are yeah. involved. Got it, good, thanks. So all these actions that we are performing, we are assuming that the person who has deployed the cluster has the rights to do it. Otherwise, it's not that anybody can log into the cluster or the Argo CD URL and expose on port 8080 and work on this. That's not how it will be, right? It will be the person will have permissions to do that activity first. 
right now we are working mostly in i have just one doubt i have just changed the port here 81 mm -hmm. and after deployment i am just trying to call port forwarding to 81 to another port to access the nginx outside with the 80 port it is it was working but now i change to 81 it is saying service nginx doesn't have this port so this this port gets defined inside the nginx container mm -hmm. also right so, yeah, that's what actually it's not working. Then I have to use that port only in this, in right? That port itself, yes. Okay. Or if you want, then you have to create a custom Nginx image which exposes on port 81. Yeah, got it. <laughs> All right. And what was the second step? Containerization. Somebody said they containerized the app. Uh, can somebody show? The second uh, step. Yes, containerize the application. Anybody so else want to take a shot? Uh... Hello. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, please repeat the question again. So I I was saying this is the task one where we maybe use nginx as base image and deploy Argo CD and connect Git repository with Argo mm -hmm. CD that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. What about the second yes. task? Has anyone accomplished that? Uh, Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. I have uh, completed sir. the containerization part, but uh, 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 right now my laptop is very well. The, uh, it's uh, go. It, I am power is like uh, no worries. It's, it's uh, Sanjeev, what we can do? So, yeah. so uh, Sanjeev, uh, Pradeep showed one application. Uh, run on the mini cube. So, uh, can we try to deploy this on uh, EKS cluster? Yes, why yes. not? Yes. So, we can deploy the we, same application to EKS cluster. But we were missing show. We'll try to show here. Yeah. Yep, you want to show something? Go for it. Yeah, I have the running cluster. I will show you one second. Yep. Hope you're able to see my screen, right? Yes. yes. So I have the running cluster. I'll just set it up. The cluster to T3 medium. And you can use one, maybe why you are extra cost, you can use one. Should be enough for this project. Okay. For this time, we are we just go with the two yep, because yep. I have to again bring down the cluster. Yep. So Pradeep, both the worker nodes are having T two dot medium. T three medium. T three, he said. T three, okay. And your yes. uh, main node, master node. Master node is Sorry? EKS, so this is a okay. managed service. Managed okay. by uh, AWS. AWS, yes. We are not creating that one. Who was asking this question? Because we clarified on the chat also the other day. It's a managed service, so we never come to know what master node is. One this is getting the password for the admin user, this process. Yeah, we are getting the password. <laughs> So this is this is the password and the URL name will be oh, one second. This is how okay. we have to do the port forwarding. From here we can talk. So this will be the URL. Can you just clear the screen and just run the command? 
One second. Can you see now? Part of it is seen due to how oh, do I do this? It's clear and and uh, which screen you are on pradeep i don't know if it's frozen or one second. i will reshare actually i have some issue with network issues on my side since morning one second i'm just resharing re yeah Hey Sanjeev, I am stuck from this step. Is so there a way to do? Once I do the port forwarding, uh, is that way? Can I uh, can I uh, share on the screen at uh, the time? Go for it. Go for it quickly. I have to select this screen part, right? You're able to do that. You guys don't share at work. Your your screen share desktop and all that. We do Sanjeev, but I guess they are not familiar with the Zoom, I believe. But it's, it's a simple one, yeah. Pradeep, you sharing? I, I think it's chasing network problem. Let's let's move on then. Uh, uh, anyone, somebody was facing issue with this step. Uh, we may I not... have started my cluster, sir. Okay. Sanjay, uh, sorry to, uh, to come uh, in between. Like, you know, I, 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 I want to ask a question and after that I want to leave. Mm -hmm. Because basically I have create, uh, created a Docker file because there is no Docker file in that Spring uh, pet clinic thing. Mm -hmm. And I created an image using Jenkins. Yep. And uh, uh, first week I have created uh, using Terraform EKS cluster and all. So those scripts are ready. Right. And uh, I used Argo CD to deploy that one. So uh, that's all right. The task, you know, do we need to do anything? Or Were you, you able to... to deploy the uh, pet clinic inside the cluster? Actually, uh, I have achieved till Docker image. Like, you know, uh, I have deployed using Nginx sample, uh, exactly. base, basic, basic sample. Correct. What Pradeep has done already, right? Same that same level. Yeah, same yeah, level. I have, but, created, uh, I have created the image as well. I'll just replace the image that clinic and then we will be no, sorry guys. I was just disconnected. Sorry. Yeah, just, just hold on, Pradeep. Just... Hold on, hold on. So okay. So yeah. Uh, so pet so, clinic app will is not that straightforward as Nginx is. Nginx is just one single container uh, running on port 80. Pet clinic one, we have to deploy in such a way that it can, you, there are two ways the pet clinic can be deployed. It can use the default uh, MySQL uh, setup. We will not use that. So in, if you look at the readme file of that, we will supply an external uh, mo, uh, MySQL uh, database endpoint so that it can connect to it. So our uh, uh, Docker image, will also have some environment variables which it can use to connect to a specific mysql 
database and that MySQL also we will deploy inside the cluster. Okay. So that is the change that we have. So yeah, you, if you uh, planning to do that, that's the, uh, for the next week we will target deploying the pet clinic that will be one service, just like Nginx will be deployed on maybe one or two replica uh, for that app. In parallel, there will be another one, which is uh, MySQL uh, database related. Uh, and I think, let me let me share my screen uh, because I think he, he wants to leave. Uh, so. Yeah, 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 please. Okay, uh... Thanks, Sanju. You know, if you can, if you can, uh, I mean, go through that read, read me, like, you know. Yeah, uh, let me open that pet clinic also. You can see my screen, right? Yes. Yes, Sanju is. Yes. So this is that uh, pet clinic uh, app, and you will see that you can clone and you can set it up. It will work on localhost. It has some default, its own uh, built-in database. That is fine. A Docker file is not given, but you can, you have to build it uh, yourself. You can, it's very simple, straightforward uh, Docker file. Maybe anybody from July batch, they can, they can share, or maybe I will, I will uh, set up something. Now, this is the interesting part. In its default configuration, Pet Clinic uses an in-memory H2 database, which is populated at startup. So even if you run uh, with no uh, database, it will have some default database inside it, but that's not what we want to use. We want to use a similar setup is provided for MySQL and PostgreSQL if a persistent database configuration is needed. So we need a persistence database. That is, that is why we are we are saying it's slightly complex that is having database also. Yes. So note that whenever the database type changes, the app needs to run a different profile. So we will not change the database type. We'll stick to maybe MySQL uh, or if anybody is adventurous, they can try PostgreSQL also, but we'll stick to one of them. And this is how then in that case, Docker uh, Pet Clinic uh, will have to run. Docker run uh, using the MySQL, you will provide MySQL user MySQL password and uh, the endpoint for the MySQL uh, database. That's how you will run in case of you are using an external database. So now everything gets stored in the MySQL stuff. How it will reflect as a deployment it should is. Now you can see the presentation, right? Yes. That this is how we will try to uh, set up. So we will, on the left, you see is pretty much uh, the deployment of Nginx maybe. This is this is where your uh, front end pods will come. If this is showing like two pods, one replica set. This is you just replacing Nginx with uh, your Docker, uh, pet clinic image. Uh, Docker image. But spring image. Spring pet clinic image. Yeah, spring pet clinic image. But mm -hmm. in parallel, you also have database for your pod, where which is using MySQL uh, deployment. So this is this will use MySQL, and then username and password will be stored in a secret, and then everything will be exposed as a service. This is the service endpoint that uh, this will use your front end and. Uh, Okay. Right. So there will be some additional, uh, this pod will accept some environment variables. Nginx does not do that. You will specify extra environment variables. And in the environment variables, you will specify endpoint of this service. You will specify username and password. These three things will be provided to this. And then you can basically scale your database. You Three containers, five containers, anything. You can scale your front end three containers, five containers, seven containers, whatever you want based on the load. So everything is microservices, database. And then next week when we play around, the objective would be we terminate this uh, entire pod. With, this should be recreated based on the config. The data should be stored on the storage. This is where your PVC, PV storage stuff will come into picture. We delete everything on this uh, front end. Uh, we delete the entire application. This when the application starts again, 
uh, based on same configuration it's using using Argo CD. So we will not make any uh, config changes and all. We'll just say delete this, delete that. But still, the next time when the application starts, it should pick up the same database, same manual entries that we made. They should all be visible to us. That is the final uh, objective of uh, that. That's when we call that. Yes, this is this is done. Thank you. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sandeep. So it's not just replacing uh, the image and uh, done with it. The, the actual learning is on the right hand side. Uh, next, so next week target what I what I we can see is to create all the manifest file like deployment file for the database part and uh, application part. Yes, and we have to deploy inside the system. And I, uh, Sanjeev, yeah, I'm, I'm able to spin up the cluster and also go, uh, start the pet clinic application on the Argo CD. Yeah, just just give me one few seconds more so that we know what we have to do next week. Also, we'll we'll come to it. So, yeah. this is this is uh, some of the manifest files that I have uh, put together. So this is uh, you can see that uh, this is not exactly what we have to do, but everything will be now split into. There will be a secret. There will be a volume claim. There will be an app with uh, different uh, stuff. And you see in the you can see my mouse cursor. Yes, yes. Yeah. So so here you will see that you this this specific replica, which is probably your pet clinic in future, will will be able to use persistent volume. Will be able to use username and password defined by this secret. And then this secret will be used by uh, MySQL uh, cluster as well. So everything will be linked together eventually. All right. And we'll use HPA and all. Uh, that is, uh, if we are able to in the next week, uh, that's fine. But uh, we will try to deploy port scalers uh, within the environment. So, and if we increase the workload on those microservices, right now we say uh, increase by one, two, three. We specify, right? Uh, Pradeep was increasing one or two based on uh, that. But in the code, but in reality, that, that won't be the case, right? We will also have an HPA running in parallel, which is monitoring the resources. And if we put extra load on those uh, uh, containers and we see that the average utilization is going above, automatically it should add additional uh, uh, pods in the environment without any intervention. So that is slightly complex to achieve, but we will definitely do it in this project. Uh, but we have to set up in such a way that uh, a very low CPU threshold has to be set up and you have to, uh, you know, push your container under certain limits so that it can cross those uh, thresholds and create additional containers. So we'll do that uh, sort of thing. That would be for the next week uh, activity. So we have to achieve this kind of setup. And in this, if you are able to do HPA, fine, but just ignore the HPA and HPA on these, this side, but everything else has to be accomplished. Yeah, let me stop share. Any any questions before we uh, move on to the other? All right, let's move on. So yeah, you... Somebody said that the cluster is ready, so they want to show something, building of the image. Yeah, I was, sir. Yes, sir. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, we can. Actually, it's uh, it's uh, uh, on my local laptop. It's in Git, so I have uh, two uh, files, nginx service and nginx. So we will see 
that is the basic file we are using so you are using uh, minikube uh, k3s eks yes okay so it's basic uh, manifest uh, api version apps one it's a deployment app nginx specification uh, replicas three uh, match labels app nginx uh, again, the specification containers, uh, it's basic image nginx and name nginx, okay? It's a basic image. I just, uh, uh, I will do the, some changes, okay? I will do the four, okay? And it's, save it. So we can say git add git status. Yeah, so it's uh, now we can uh, commit the code into the GitHub. So there is command git commit hyphen m and we will give the simple name first save code. Okay, it's already saved. And I now, have... so now, Rohit, uh, can you please go on mute? Oh, sorry. So we will uh, see the latest commit. That's a commit, and uh, we will push the code. Hit push hyphen u. Seems like uh, in git commit, the commit uh, name is wrong in the, in the command. I think commit spelling was wrong. Okay, okay. Uh, then it's... Uh, yeah, sorry. Commit open in save. Yeah, it's uh, now we can uh, see the git status. Yeah, it's obviously fine. Now we will uh, push the code. Git push and view. Yeah, it's done. Now uh, we we can go to the application and we'll see the app. No, not applications. Yeah, it's a dev, and we will see the output refresh. What are you expecting? Any did you make yeah, any? Actually, yeah, actually, I was. I think I was uh, did a manual instead of automatic. That's why I'm checking synchronize. Yeah, actually, it's done. Yeah, uh, we have did a four uh, replica. So already it's done four replica, and we will see in a cluster also. But there are four, and you requested four. Yeah. He requested four. No, I think there were three. He requested four. Oh, so another one yeah. uh, showed up. Okay. We see the latest time there as well. Yeah, it's a minute four. ago it was created. Right, perfect. It's four. Okay. Cool. So it's done, and now we will see the. Uh, 
and the master will be updated based on the yeah uh we, we can see the get uh, no uh q ctl get all hyphen and dev yeah it's working it's four desired four current four and ready for so it's ready So that was the task, but I didn't. Uh, uh, I couldn't... Hello. 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 Yeah, go for it. Yeah, that was I did, sir. But I couldn't access the um, that pod uh, that container which in in the pod. Uh, I couldn't access from the outside. The nginx one, yeah. Okay, that is pretty much same what we do for uh, Argo CD, right? Um, well, please mute yourself. Let me mute everyone. That is, you have to use the same uh, port forward on a different port. Make sure you are not using eighty eighty again. <clears throat> I muted everyone. Just one second. Mute, unmute yourself if you are talking now. Sagar, you, you. Just unmute yourself. Please. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I, uh, I, I haven't used the eighty eighty. I just uh, uh, changed uh, type cluster type to node port. So that was uh, uh, by default. I have uh, taken uh, that three thousand something the port. Yep. I can get uh, you. Ctl. Uh, that's three two five eight two. Okay. So now I just uh, check if I. Copy the EC2 instance public IP and paste here. And C2582. So it's not working actually. Yeah, you can uh, for it to be publicly available because this service is inside the cluster. Uh, okay. Node port will not work. You have to use cluster. Uh, you have to create a load balancer, and there's additional different type of service you have to use. Load balancer type. Okay, if I want to access from the outside, then I have to use load balancer. If you have to, yes. That's if you uh, want to expose your service from the EC2 instance, like from your uh, to the outer world. But for testing purpose, if you want to use it, you can use port forward to access that service from your laptop. But that's not; it will not be accessible from for anybody else. Okay. Yeah. So maybe write something similar to what we had for. Uh, Argo CD because Argo CD we access right. Argo CD is yeah, installed yeah. inside the cluster. Yeah. Uh, port eighty eight is you are uh, using from your machine through port forward uh, process. But if, for example, you have to expose your Argo CD that I can access, you can access, anybody else who has permissions, they should be able to access. Then the type of the service should be load balancer, and. It behind the scene will create an elastic load balancer, which will have a public IP and you will be able to access it from there. Okay. Leave that with me. I will try to demonstrate it uh, next time because there is another extra cost associated and all that sort of thing. Okay. And uh, I have one more question. Uh, uh, that uh, just a minute. Sir, yeah. Is there I can be a... I... 
Okay. Uh, so is there can be issue that we have to specify that node put in our uh, inbound room? No, 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 it's not like that. No. <clears throat> the, I have already the... all the TCP ports are enabled. So actually, I think it... It is not. That's not how you, you make it publicly available. This could be... Okay. Yeah, Shalendra has put together uh, like it will change your specification uh, of your file as well. That the service okay, okay. that you are exposing should be exposed on a load balancer. Okay, and uh, I didn't understand the what is the uh, role of the task uh, uh, of the Jenkins? What is the role of the? Jenkins. What is the role of Jenkins in the task? In this task, there is yeah, no, because... it is to build the Docker image. Okay. The pet clinic, Docker image, you can build through Jenkins, GitLab or any other. Azure DevOps, whatever you use, doesn't matter. We we want to make sure that Pet Clinic is built so that it can accept username, password, and the MySQL URL, which we will provide it, and it should be able to start itself on maybe port eighty eighty or any. Sanjeev. Yep. Uh, we, we, uh, is there any way that uh, uh, what are the latest Docker images we push to the Docker Hub through CI pipeline? Mm -hmm. Is there any way that we can uh, submit modification in our uh, uh, pipeline code and we can directly push the latest changes, that latest Docker image into our uh, GitOps repository that we created, mm -hmm. like separate repository? I think Pradeep showed that, right? He, he pushed nginx 11 and then that automatically updated the GitOps repository and then the latest version was deployed i am asking with ci pipeline yeah, yeah from ci pipeline your jenkins pipeline once it is building a new image if you want your ci image to also update the source code of your uh, GitOps repository you can very well do that But just if, for simplicity, if you need any help, I can help. Yeah, just for simplicity, we will assume maybe you know for every somebody who is starting that CI pipeline is slightly separate in this case, which is building Docker image, and our GitOps repository is different repository, which just has these two or three files, which are deployment files, your Argo CD application file, and that's it. And within these files, you specify which image version you have to choose. So you will maybe make a manual change. And a lot of companies do that, like not, they don't go to that next level that anything that gets built also gets deployed right away in the production. So there might be other stages in between or uh, there might be a specific rollout window when they want to do it. They want to build the image during nine to five and be ready with it but deploy it at uh, night time. So that kind of control you want. So having manual is not a problem. It doesn't limit in any way. Having automated, it gives you additional learning process that you can also push that information to your repository from CI. I have another question. Just I redeploy with the two services, but now my Application is not stable, so let me share my screen quickly. Sometimes something is out of sync, sometimes something is out of sync. Are you able to see my screen? Yep, yep. So see here, it's a flickering. This is just moving out of sync. Sometimes some one application, sometimes another one application. I think it's mainly because of that you're using port 80, 81 and that. No, I, ha I have mapped uh, these to the right to right in the service itself. <laughs> So I can show the code as well, like I have changed in service, but uh, I, I just want to understand, can we run two services at a time? We can, multiple, yes. And we will run, right, in, in our actual... Yeah, in actual environment. It, we will, it will... In this project itself, we will have uh, one service for MySQL and one service for uh, yes. the Pet Clinic app. So, yeah. So like I created this service 
here I am using target port is 80, but in service I am mapping to 81. Then there might be issue because of these uh, these stuff, right? So yeah, just experiment with this. Maybe some other issue. So just I think we'll we'll manage it. This this is not a big because we are updating on the fly. There might be some typo, some config not matching. No, I just uh, first changed, then I redeployed. So after redeploy with the two earlier, I was using <laughs> one service for right. one application. Now I created two services for both the applications separate. So after deploying, I'm getting this. So here again, I put, I map with 82 port with a separate node port. Yeah. So ideally it should work, but somehow it's not working. We'll see, I mean, we won't be able to debug on the fly. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll check once. So I just want to understand we can run multiple services. We can, one yes. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> As long as your compute supports that. Yes. The EC2 should be able to run pods for your both the services and that limit is not breached. Then you can do that. <clears throat> okay. Then I'll give a bit. Uh, Sanjeev, I just wanted to share that uh, I was able to uh, spin up the pet clinic application uh, on the Argo CD. So can I share my screen? Yeah, yeah, please. So you went ahead with the next week activity also? Yeah, actually I did. I just tried with the in-memory uh, database. I'm not using any MySQL or okay. Postgres. Okay, okay. Uh, so... Do you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so... Uh, this is all a very simple application that I tried. Uh, okay. Uh, so there were two phases, right? For initially, you asked us to use the Jenkins and uh, build a pipeline to build the image first. Yep. So uh, I just started up to build an application. Uh, and this is all downloading the, the pet clinic application. And uh, then it was able to uh, push it to uh, Docker, and this is where I see my, uh, the new image, Petlinic image on the Docker, uh, which was, if I refresh, it was pushed some time ago. Yeah, if you see, I pushed it 21 minutes ago, and also I was able to push a few other versions of it. Yep. Okay, and, uh, after that, as everyone everyone showed, right, we can just have a Git repo and uh, uh, using Nginx, we can uh, just deploy it on the Argo CD. So instead of, I uh, used Nginx as well, but also uh, since I, I had an image already in Docker Hub, so yep. I used that image and was able to uh, save. And as you were talking about the load balancer, uh, so, since uh, this is on AWS, right? Uh, I was able to uh, get it through. Uh, all I had to, do, I, I was also facing the same problem, mm -hmm. but all I had to do was, this is my uh, worker node, uh, right? And this is on T3 medium. And I just changed the security group here. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I have, for now I allowed everything, all TCP. Uh, so, that worked for me and able to access this uh, node port. So again, that is uh, not a good practice, right? Uh, we can, yeah, right. because your nodes are again, temporary in nature. So you can't share this URL with anyone and uh, yeah, right. expect it to work tomorrow. So it, it yeah, right. has limitation. You have actually taken a shortcut, breached yeah. security and then uh, done it. So it, it will work but not the right way. Uh, you can't right. Use. So, yeah, I want to use the same way, like, uh, is this a good approach to access Argo CD? Because I use a load balancer yeah. uh, rather than a node port here. Yes. Uh, so this worked for me. Uh, this, I may then... This is the one. This you can expect to work tomorrow. You stop Argo uh -huh. CD and do anything you, you can expect. Mm -hmm. And basically, you can also... Uh, have a route 53 record which even if your load balancer gets terminated you can point it mm -hmm. to the new load balancer that gets created so 
this is a, a better approach but it will cost you a fortune like your mm, right your and, okay and yeah of. i understand so anyways yeah. i will destroy everything that yeah it's it sure. it very expensive yeah yeah, yeah i know <clears throat> so yeah this is the uh, right way you okay. see the type is now load balancer if you show the specification the spec will say not node port it will say load balancer all right all right and, and so, automatically behind the scene it will be created you don't have to yeah right it yeah, doesn't have to correct. do anything create new load balancer configure uh, routing and that sort of stuff automatically uh, gets uh, yeah yeah okay. so yeah the the pet clinic is running on the node port whereas uh, the argo is okay. running on load okay. balancer okay. so you're very I'll, close I'll... you just have to create a new service for uh, mysql mm -hmm. and then create a new secret and make sure that your your pet clinic app is receiving those uh, environment variables uh, three environment okay. variables username password and the endpoint of mysql service okay that's it and then play around term, yeah make some entry manual entries to database terminate and see if you are able to persist the data Okay, all right. I I faced some issue when uh, using the MVNW, uh, creating a package out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Maven and there all. There is a yeah. So there is a uh, you have a, what is that MVNW package? So this command when I try to create it, it gets me an error saying that it is not able to integrate MySQL with the image. So <laughs> I don't know why, but that is some issue I faced with there, this. It might be some local issue because we have done this in, in July project. Uh, uh -huh. We have used external RDS. We used an RDS MySQL there okay. and we integrated all this together. So I see. it works. Maybe some issue with, with the local. Uh, but anyway, this is a build stage step, right? This is not. Uh, Correct. So just go through the readme and try to set up to an external even that could be a good starting point. You set up an external RDS first and see mm -hmm. that your Docker image can reference that RDS. Okay. You know, so then you will be confident that your Docker image is stable. It can mm -hmm. retrieve, it, it can talk to an endpoint and show me the user interface properly. And then mm -hmm. you move on to uh, containerizing that uh, MySQL stuff. Okay. Right, those okay. you can split it into steps basically. Right, right. Okay, L let me think about it. <laughs> I'm not able to picture it, but yeah, let me think about it. So, so picture as in, uh, I can. So I'm I'm just saying that you know, just so that you are comfortable. Uh, let me share my. Sure. Can you see my uh, presentation? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. So basically. This right hand side uh, of this this portion is a database uh, cluster. So before we create all this, get into the complexity of uh, uh, this thing, we mm -hmm. can actually create a new say RDS cluster, RDS endpoint. I don't have. Uh... Is it a cluster or a namespace? See, I'm, I don't get confused. Just. Just I'm what I'm saying is that before you get into doing all this sort of work, before you do this, why not set up a RDS MySQL? Why just like we did in the uh, previous project sheet? So we set up an RDS. It has nothing to do with Kubernetes, no relationship with Kubernetes or this project, and try to create this so that it can connect to my RDS uh, endpoint and I, it can take some username and password that I use to create my RDS cluster. So if you reach to this level, then this will also give you the required persistence. Mm -hmm. So your cluster should, you should be able to, so this now this becomes your pet clinic app talking to an RDS cluster. That is one way of uh, deploying in the Kubernetes cluster, but using an AWS managed database. Okay. We will not learn a lot of things because of this, because this RDS is managed by AWS. I will have right. an endpoint that I my application can use, and it's it's a very easy easy uh, piece. Companies do use this kind of setup also, 
but we have deliberately made this so that you understand all persistent volume, volume claim, and you can also highlight that you have used a database inside the cluster as a service. So this takes it to next level, basically. Okay, got it. And then once you are confident that, yes, this works with an RDS cluster, then it should work with this also. Because what if your Docker image has issues, it cannot talk to an RDS cluster or cannot com communicate with an RDS cluster or that sort of thing. Right. Okay. It just uh, it gives you a bit of confidence. Thank you. All right. Uh, that's a pretty good progress, actually. Uh, what I wanted to show, uh, use other tools if you want to. If you are don't want to use Nginx or uh, if you don't want to use Jenkins, use, use additional tools. Uh, I'm using GitLab. I'm using GitLab. This is that application that we discussed, that file. I got it manually through to work on my uh, repository. And instead of using Jenkins file, I used GitLab CI. I don't have to install Maven and everything. I will take the latest Maven uh, Docker image. And that's how it, you use it in the GitLab to build the package. So try with different tools if you want to. Don't stick to Jenkins alone. But result is pretty much same, what you achieved in the Jenkins. This is uh, equivalent GitLab uh, version. So this file will give me the Docker image. Then, uh, then again, I'm also using Nginx, a service, node port. Yeah, pretty much same sort of stuff. So I was just keeping it ready just in case somebody is not ready, uh, not able to demonstrate but it, it's a good progress i uh, how is everyone feeling those who have those who will be working on this will get the benefit if you are watching sitting outside uh, as a spectator then it, it's of no use and and all this you can now people have done it you can see the demo you can request them their repository you can set it up yourself uh, make sure you give reasonable compute to your cluster otherwise you get into uh, the container is not starting and that kind of issues. So give reasonable compute. T3 medium is absolutely perfect for until this level. So you can do that. Uh, and yeah, it, it probably will take one or two days. Everybody in the project can reach to this level. Uh, it's not that we haven't gone that far as yet because you, you can take help now from people. So maybe if, if you guys want, you can do a one-on-one -on -one demo, longer demos, step-by-step uh, -step, uh, stuff. You can talk to each other and sort it out. Reach Everybody reach to the same level in the next one or two days. And then maybe next week, you, you try to build the Docker image. You try to present that instead of Nginx, now we are using Pet Clinic. Instead of not using a database, we are using MySQL related stuff. And just to accelerate your study, take help from maybe chat GPT. Just request that, you know, I need a standard file for a MySQL container or uh, that sort of thing. Pretty much like what we Google and uh, use. So make use of uh, that also. But it will start with a lot of errors, a lot of issues, but eventually you will uh, get used to it. And try to write some of these files manually, right? try to write these, uh, make changes, play around. That's, that's when you will be very comfortable with these manifest files. Sure. Uh, in the meanwhile, Sharath, uh, you mind sharing that uh, your screen once uh, for the Jenkins file, which we, which you used for you know creating that uh, sure, Docker sure. file. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. I'll take a one minute break. You you guys go ahead. I'll just be back. Sure. Uh, are you able to see my screen? Yeah. 
Sorry, I'm, I'm actually I, I have hit destroy everything, so <laughs> I that can show the Jenkins yeah. file on the Git uh, that I'm using. <clears throat> oh, so you were using you were installing Jenkins through Terraform only. Yeah, I'm installing. Okay, so uh, to start with that, right? Uh, I'm actually installing uh, even Jenkins and everything through Terraform itself. Uh, basically, I'm creating an instance. Uh, but one thing, I'm creating everything in default. I'm not creating anything, any private VPC or something. Uh, so I'm creating a default EC2 instance. And I have a small shell script, uh, which takes care of uh, installing uh, Jenkins, then Maven, uh, Git, Docker, everything on that uh, Jenkins server. Okay. So that's how I initially built the, the Jenkins master server. You want to show that? Uh, oh, yeah, sure. That TF file. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so this is my very, uh, you know, basic EC2 instance that I'm creating. Uh, I'm creating a T2 medium. Uh, reason okay. because uh, the build was not, when I used T2 micro, the build was never success. Uh, it actually stuck in between. So I had to uh, change the instance type to T2 medium. And after that, it was able to uh, build. And uh, this is my, I was talking, saying that there's a, shell script right so this is my shell script uh which i'm actually pushing it on slash temp on the server once it's built and also changing the permission okay and okay. once the server is up and the next step what i'm doing is uh, i'm going into temp uh, i had some problem running from Ter if i run the same script from terraform uh it was giving me some uh, issues uh, because it requires pseudo privileges when you run it on the server. So uh, so I rather, I prefer to go in the server, go into the server, uh, slash temp, and then just run the script. The script will be available, install.sh, uh, and then just go ahead and run the script. It will okay, so that's going to be manual thing, right? Yeah, After it's, logging it's to that server. Okay. Correct. It's going to be manual, manual thing. So. I'm installing open JDK, then Jenkins, uh, and then enabling the Jenkins. The Jenkins step is done here. Uh, then I'm installing the uh, JDK 17, which is required, the Java runtime 17, which is required, right, uh, for this project. Uh, that's something I'm installing it. And then similarly, Maven is required to build it. And uh, within the spring, uh, repo we have a pom.xml which will help you to build the image using maven and then finally i'm installing the uh, docker and uh, this step is to uh, we have to create we have to export the java home and also the maven home that's why once you once you have exported right once it gets on your bash.rc file Usually, either you have to log out from the system and then connect back. But if you run this source root.bashrc, this will uh, refresh. So then you can just run the Maven home and will give you uh, this location. And if you try Java home, will give you this location. And similarly, uh, when you run the uh, Jenkins pipeline, uh, the Jenkins user requires certain privileges because you will be uh, running it as a pseudo. So this has to go in the sudoers file so that uh, Jenkins doesn't need to, you know, uh, put a password or it will not ask for a password. Okay. So this is complete setup for, for the Jenkins master. And after that, this is actually, I'm, uh, I actually killed everything. So let me show you how the Jenkins file looks like. Okay. So this is my Jenkins file. And uh, this is just, a, uh, this is, the label is basically the Jenkins master uh, label, which I have changed it on the Jenkins itself. 
so it, it will go and fetch that server and uh, run this Jenkins file. Initially, I'm building the image uh, through M Maven, right? And then once it's done, uh, I face the problem with a uh, Docker file. Uh, if your Docker file, uh, the Docker file will go and sit in your workspace, uh, the Jenkins workspace. And if you run the Docker file from that location, uh, it will not fetch the var file. Uh, the var file, when I say var file, this is our end product, right? When you do MV and build. In that case, you can use multi-stage Docker file. Yeah, so I, I didn't want it to use the uh, compose. So what I did is, uh, this is where it gets built, uh, the .jar file. So uh, I moved the Docker file to this location itself. And uh, that that's uh, one step I have here. If you see, uh, I'm actually copying the Docker file to the destination. I have a variable here. So this is my source is workspace and the Docker file, and I'm moving it to the destination. This is where your .jar file resides. Uh, and then you're yeah, using the Docker build command. Uh, you use you have to use sudo, and also that's where that's why I showed you that Jenkins requires no password. Uh, and once a Docker image is built, uh, you have to do a Docker login. Uh, this is a process to do a Docker login. And then finally you push the image to uh, Docker Hub. So this is the step. But in order to do Docker, Docker login, you have to uh, create a Docker token and you need to mention it on the, uh, you know, there is a, I won't be able to show it now, but there is something called as uh, credentials. Uh, when you go to manage uh, in the dashboard, there is something called as credential. You need to add the credential on uh, Jenkins so that that particular uh, Docker token can be used to push your image. And similarly, when you want to pull the uh, uh, pull the repo from GitHub, you also need to uh, put the credential or the token uh, in that uh, add credential option. So that's what. Sanji was talking about uh, Jenkins. We have to put our credentials, and and it's uh, one of the security risks. So, right, got it. Yeah, got it. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Just a quick thing, uh, Sharad. So every time when you log into, now you have destroyed the servers. Now mm -hmm. you will recreate them. The moment mm -hmm. you recreate and log into that uh, your server, uh, is it mm -hmm. something like you have to manually install kubectl and everything from the scratch, or is there anything you can do for that as well? Okay. So for kubectl, uh, I'm not installing anything on the server. Uh, it is on my uh, local system. So this is the uh, git bash that I use. Uh, so here I have installed kubectl. And the first thing I do is uh, this. I, I download the cube config. So this is like uh, the first step, if you are using a Kubernetes, the first step is you should have a config file to talk to your cluster, okay? So this is the command that I would run to download the config file. And once I'm done, if you see here, I'm able to uh, see the worker nodes, right? And after that, these are the steps that I use to uh, install the Argo CD. Uh, yeah, these, the these steps are there in that uh, yeah. sheet. Yeah. So yeah, uh, right. this config file, where this config file is stored, uh, Sharad? This will be on the master. So you will, okay. uh, this command will talk to your master and then fetch the information. If this okay. gets downloaded to your uh, user specific uh, folder. Correct. Pretty much like your AWS when you do AWS configure or when you do SSH to some place, so just like SSH keys, public private keys, and you do cube uh, AWS configure, you get credentials downloaded. It's pretty much a key to your cluster, basically. If you share this file with me, I can log into your cluster as well. 
Okay. So, so Sanjeev, what, what's happening? Uh, you know, when when I log into that server after running all these install commands, uh, kubectl and uh, everything, I need to every time do the AWS configure. Otherwise, it won't run further. Yeah, because you are using AWS EKS. You are getting from cluster using AWS. Uh credential so yeah you need to do aws configure first and uh we we cannot automate it i mean every time when i log into that fresh server the newly created server mm -hmm. uh what is the way to bypass that that aws configure is already configured when i log in uh, but Lendra, I don't think so. You have to do that every time AWS configure. You just you can directly use the ekctl command to create the cluster. Yeah, I I never had to do that. I I did only one time. I don't you know why. You did it on your personal uh, workstation, right? Yeah. He's creating a new EC2 every time. Ah, okay. Then yeah, uh, then you have he has. So to you have two everything. options. You can either uh, a bad option, which you can. Uh, which is like use user data file or use a file which at the startup configures your AWS uh, terminal. The other option could be that you, when you are creating the EC2 instance, assign it a reasonable role, maybe admin level role, then it can automatically talk to your EKS cluster. So your instance profile, you can assign the role that it can, then you don't need AWS configure to be done. Hi, hi, Sharad and Sanjeev, one, one question. So, what is the objective of doing this uh, this uh, cube config? Because uh, when I I was launching the cluster, I was not doing that. Is that mandatory step or? Uh, is... Yes. Yes. This is, but I was not doing this is that. Cube, just... cube CTL is a, a tool used by say admin of the cluster. So, for them to connect with the cluster, talk to it, they need some sort of secret that they are uh, you know using. So that is this cube config file. So using this, you can connect to the, the cluster. So yeah, you need this step. This is very mandatory. Otherwise, it will not cube CTL will not connect. Hello, Sarat. Uh, will you please uh, uh, provide the link of your GitHub repository in chat? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. I should just just would like to know how do you spin the cluster? Or like, is it using Terraform or uh, by? Oh uh, yeah, some it's using using the Terraform. Okay. So I have a simple very simple script, uh, simple Terraform script. So it just that you run. Yes, yeah, that okay. I run every that, time. That you run from your uh, system only, like from from, yeah, because, uh, from local, local machine. Yeah, because I have done the AWS configure here, so I don't have to uh, every time uh, do the stuff. So it oh. comes quite handy, but that's not the way to do it. So. Mm -hmm. But okay. you do it on your terminal, on your personal workstation. You can configure it once and give it like long running credentials and it should be fine. Because otherwise you will be managing a lot of other things and not focusing on the project. You are trying to set up kubectl and uh, downloading kube config and everything. Uh, my cluster is running from like three, four uh, weeks. And every time I just have to, I just log into my machine, start my terminal, and I'm already connected with my AWS, already connected with uh, the, the cluster. Everything is set up. So try to, and I'm sure uh, everybody, if you reach to that level, it, it will be, it will save your time. Otherwise you are struggling and doing non-productive activities. That is where my maximum time is going, Sanjeev. Yeah, exactly. And I, I would like to bypass it. That's the only reason I was asking don't, this question. Don't run it on EC2. Don't create a new EC2 for your day-to-day uh, -day work. Do it from your terminal. Create long, like create secret key for that IEM user that you have. And uh, just do AWS configure for that once. That's it. Okay. Uh, you you have any uh, reference uh, video or something or a quick uh, diagram for that, Sanjeev? I can follow that because you know most of my time is going in uh, this daily stuffs, 
and I'm yet to reach to that Docker uh, images where I need to push it, the main no code. architecture or no diagram as such. It's just having, uh, let me share quickly. This is what we discussed, right? When uh, they watch the videos again, if you have to. This on the left, you have a kubectl. This is this is uh, showing basically your terminal where you work, your laptop on the left hand side. You are talking to your EKS control plane through this. You are downloading kube config in in this process. Any any command you are firing on kubectl is going to uh, control plane through this uh, the service basically the, the API service that control plane offers. So try to understand this architecture. And on the left-hand side is what your terminal is. You just set it up once and you shouldn't be needing it again. Uh, Sanjeev Kuldeep here. I just have a question regarding EKS. Can I ask? You have a question about? Uh, around EKS, can I ask you? Yeah, yeah, please. I will try if I know other Okay, way. so, yeah. So uh, whenever we create the EKS clusters in the production via Terraform, mm -hmm. uh, do we also write the uh, core components such as core DNS, VPC, and I, and QProxy? Because uh, no. when we upgrade the cluster, we need to upgrade it via Terraform or RMOCD, however we do it. No, so no, no. in production, uh, do we write it in the Terraform or not? No, no, no. Those are all, that's why we are using a managed cluster. If okay. If we were using our own cluster set up on, somebody was asking what is the specification of a master node. So that means that person somehow went into documentation where somebody is setting up a master node EC2, then two worker nodes EC2, and then trying to install control plane on master node, trying to connect worker nodes to the master node. So that all complexity is gone. That's not needed for us to, because we are using AWS managed, so if you upgrade, everything will be upgraded. Right? Like if you upgrade the cluster uh, version, Kubernetes version from what we have now to a future version uh, that will be rolled out. So that everything, it, it's not just kubectl or not, not just uh, uh, control plane uh, stuff. Your worker nodes automatically should follow that. You don't have, you don't write Terraform code for all that sort of thing. Okay, so if we need to upgrade the EKS cluster, we just need to uh, update the version of the Terraform configuration. Yes. And we just run the apply and it will go through. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you. That's why I mentioned that a lot of admin kind of activities are going into AWS bucket. You will specify, I need Kubernetes with this version and rest of the things, everything will be managed. Uh, that's why I've suggested not to go with admin level certification and admin right away. First focus on application building package deploying, which is CKAD exam. A lot of admin kind of overheads, AWS is managing that for us. But we Got need it. to understand those concepts, but. Uh, good, good that a uh, couple of people have reached to that stage, Sanjeev. But I know there are few people where they are struggling with, with initial stage where they need to set it up and all that. And if you can just allow me a minute, I I can share my screen. Uh, yeah. Hope this is visible to everyone. Yeah. And that is where the maximum time is going. Uh, uh, I know two, three people are w from the same group. And this is where we were struggling where, you know, uh, these are the, on the left side where my cursor is moving. These are the TF files I've created. And this is the configuration uh, we run. So every time when I run uh, this uh, using Terraform, uh, Terraform plan, it's basically create a cluster. And when I log into that server, I have to run the AWS configure and all those uh, installation again and again. And, you know, th this this is what I wanted to skip yeah yeah if you if you create a fresh cluster then yes you will have to get the new cube config of that cluster okay. it's a different building so different lock different keys will be applied so you need different cube config it's a different cluster every cluster has its unique based on your role and uh, permissions 
So yeah, that if you are starting everything from scratch, setting up a new cluster, but you don't have to install kubectl on your machine again and again. That's what kubectl should be pre-installed. AWS configure should be pre-configured. You don't have to do that again and again. <clears throat> I tried writing it for, for this one, um, this setup or, of EKS, like we have to do that, yeah. but this somehow did not work. So ultimately I had to, you know, run it through maybe a little uh, new for me, but yeah, this is how I was trying. I don't know which terminal you are using. Usually things get persisted and they use same thing. All the, like all the configurations are done. Yeah. I mean, this is the manual step, which I was doing on after logging the server logging into the server, but this time I thought of, you know, writing a dot uh, TF and then it did not work. So yeah, I'll, I'll explore more in that. Which terminal so are you on your local? I'm using a uh, terminal as in, uh, I'm using Visual Studio. Okay. All right. Yeah. So maybe Visual Studio is creating a temporary terminal for you. Uh, okay. And it does. It's not persisting. Uh, that could be the possibility. Okay. Maybe it's creating a Docker container or something on the fly. Try to switch if possible. Try to use uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, maybe WSL or uh, the Git terminal that will save everything. Connect the VS Code to. Went to WSL. Yep. Instead of using PowerShell based one, try to use WSL. There should be something in the drop down on the right hand side. I think it should give you a bash option also there. Uh, if you click yeah. on that arrow drop down, it will give you the option for bash. Uh, who is who is presenting? Uh, that's who's me. Present? Shalent. Shalent. Uh, how are you passing your cube config to your EC2 instance? Uh, that's that's where I'm stuck. Uh, I'm not even passing. Uh, I need to do that. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So once this is achieved, uh, Sanjeev, uh, the how the AWS uh, dashboard will look like. How many uh depends. I mean, uh, whatever you are passing, but th there was there would be an EKS demo is like I have mentioned here. Mm -hmm. Right. One, I am using this T2 dot uh, medium. It, it is, I'll use T3 dot medium. And uh, similarly, I'll use here. I had to use T2 dot small here because T2 dot micro wasn't working. So this no, is the no, configuration. I, I think the T3, uh, T3 medium. medium needs to go, needs to be the cluster node instead of your EC2 instance. You don't, you don't, you don't really need that EC2 CTL server. Um, you can okay. just install the kubectl on your on your computer where you're doing the coding, and okay. then once you configure your computer to for the kube config, that kube config will contain information on what server to connect to, and uh, the kube kubectl application uh, will know what to connect as soon as you uh, define the cluster that you want to connect. So you don't need that kubectl server um, mm -hmm. unless if you really want to manage your kubectl on that EC2 instance. But if you're trying to save money uh, or just testing, uh, that that need that doesn't need to be in there. The T3 medium is the the node. They're talking about the node because it will require a little bit more horsepower to hold the okay. uh, pods. Okay. Yeah, if All you're right. using T3 dot medium, then I would say create at least three instances in the load group because uh, if you look at the pods value because it runs the cube system pods by default and a couple of others like cube node cube proxy so it will not allow you to like run more than three four pods on t3 dot medium so uh, if you're going to try it if you are okay with three four pods then it's fine otherwise uh, go above it or okay. use like more nodes all right all right Thanks. Thanks for the valuable feedback, guys. Thanks. You got the idea, right? 
Yeah, I'll I'm gonna try it, Sanjeev. Yeah, sure. First, get rid of that EC2 instance. We don't need that. Set up yeah. everything on your terminal. If your terminal is not persisting, switch to another uh, like use the VS Code, but use a terminal that persists. We have used WSL. Uh, use a command prompt, which is persisting. Even in this should this should work. So okay, yep, sure. Yeah, start simple. Try to uh try to create the EKS cluster and then connect to that using kubectl. And then don't worry thing about anything else. Just get that working for now before you continue because uh, you seem to be trying to solve a lot of problems at once. Yeah, right. So uh, with with this office work, whenever you get some uh, some time for yourself, either early morning or late night, and I I get stuck here. So yeah, I'll I'll try that. Thanks for the feedbacks. Yep. All right. Uh, I think we already discussed activities for the next week. We already discussed, and we have some people who are able to achieve. So take help from them uh, within the group, but don't like bug them all the time or trouble them. Try to have one session and get all your doubts and then work on it the more you troubleshoot will also is a learning process right uh, that will also help because in actual real world you will see a lot of errors we will try to bring some specific stuff like someone was showing the term the pod status being pending and not running and that's very common sort of thing so we'll we'll discuss like we will get into all those issues we will we'll have to troubleshoot all those things when you are tired of trying something and you have made a complete mess of it just terminate that node group altogether and then create a new fresh node group from start so everything that you did control plane is anyway managed by aws so you don't have to worry uh, but if you have anything done to your EC2 instances, you can terminate them, create them again. All your uh, whatever is not persisted on uh, control plane, any uh, deployments that you have done, they all, you know, that those are all whatever is the temporary thing, you can remove them and it will be a clean prop, uh, stuff for you to work on. <clears throat> What else do we discuss? Are we done with this project specific stuff? Uh, I think Divya or somebody had some questions which are not project specific. Uh, she reached out on WhatsApp and we decided we'll do it after the end of the project discussions. Yeah, I see that uh, just want to discuss a question. So I just stuck on the deployment of Argo CD. You are stuck? So I did, uh, yeah, in deployment of Argo CD. So I created a namespace Argo CD then. Uh, mm -hmm. ML file. After applying the port forward, so the port forward is happening, but I'm unable to uh, access to local host. Uh, so then, uh, so is there anything need to be allowed? Unless there is any security uh, permissions on your machine or laptop which is preventing this, this should not be the, the issue. Okay, I tried different browsers and uh, I... What is the output uh, after that? What do you get the output uh, after you run the that's... port forward? Port forward, uh, the screen will be stuck. So I tried in different uh, different terminal. Hmm. So the port forwarding is happening, like content seven zero 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 from eighty two for port three. So I took the through browser. I just uh, tried with local host. Uh, it doesn't show up. The site cannot be accessible. I am actually not sure un un unless I see this. Let's connect maybe uh, tomorrow and then we'll see what's preventing this.
if you are not able to resolve try try it within the group like you have seen like so many people are able to do it it could be anything specific on your is it an office laptop or something it's personal laptop we usually shouldn't have anything uh, complex running there so and you are admin on the machine yes yes yeah so don't see any major reasons unless some firewall is blocking or something but let's take a look is there anything related to security code don't think so no absolutely no so everybody we did nobody request added additional security groups or uh, anything like that i will try one more time Uh, just make sure you wait for a few minutes okay we wait for two or three minutes because the the pod argo cd pod has to get into uh, a running state make sure that happens uh, i waited and i have seen the status uh, the pods are everything running i played after 30 minutes mm -hmm. Any other clues no nothing right now we'll investigate we'll we'll work with you and uh, we'll try to resolve that okay so if if anybody has questions anything other than the project now uh, we can uh, get into that they can show up on the cameras or we can just talk about it Divya has sent some questions in the direct chat. Uh, some question about career. Uh, I have career gap because I was civil service exam aspirant. So how will industry take this? Uh, I am not so sure. Like you can, I don't know what your, if you can be online, you can talk about it. But I'm not sure how long was the gap was. Uh, can you justify it through some work experience kind of thing? Why well, I, I can't suggest on that. This like a lot of people are asking in the in the discussions and uh, uh, on the YouTube also that they have different career options. They were trying some other education. So that's I usually don't suggest anything on that because that's not my uh, experience or my area. Once you have decided that you want to build DevOps and cloud skills, you think that that's well right for you. That decision, whether it is right or wrong, is I will leave it to you. Once that is decided, then we can help and build these projects. I'm I'm more of technical person. Uh, I'm currently working as website designer since one year. That's fine. You are working as a web designer or or any front end engineer. You can show that experience and all these. Uh, websites, microservices, everything will eventually be moved to Kubernetes. And so you can make that a relatable experience and show that. While you are studying uh, for some exam, try to show that as experience if possible. I'm not so sure how industry will take that. Some of the companies may accept that they will not have issues. So just, just get into some entry level uh, DevOps, junior DevOps, any such role, and then build from there. All right. Uh, should we close the call then? Uh, yeah, hello, Sandeep. You show up on camera. I can't see, then it's very difficult to communicate. I don't know who I'm talking to. Sure. Hi. Yeah, hello, Sandeep. Uh, I have um, a very basic, um, basic doubt. Like uh, uh, I uh, I am from uh, electrical background, and uh, uh, I just passed out in twenty twenty two July, mm -hmm. in, and uh, it's been uh, like I had I have been I got a campus placement uh, in uh, MNC Pro. But uh, due to some recession, I am not uh, uh, got uh, able to get on board. 
so that's that's been a gap of uh, eight and uh, about one one year and uh, uh, right now when i have done um, like uh, uh, many projects in devops because i utilizes that gap uh, to build my uh, uh, expertise in devops and uh, i made made too many projects on it and uh, but i am facing uh, to get into the actual industry practice like i am not able to get the job. because when i applied through the linkedin like uh, when filter out the things for entry level job but in the description the things is like the entry level job is even asking for three to five year experience in the particular domain. And uh, so it's been very uh, hectic, you can say to me to just get an entry level job even in the DevOps. So how can we tackle this situation to just get into the field? So if you just keep trying, you, you have to build these kind of projects, show up as an experienced person, Okay, I can, I can, I can share my uh, resume if you allow. No, don't, don't do that. Like you, your personal information. So if you okay. can talk about it. Okay, okay, definitely. Yeah, I will, I will send my resume to you. Please have a review on it. Like what I can add extra or what I can do uh, extra than what currently I have already completed so okay. that i can get an advantage to just get into the field okay okay yeah yeah you can share it with me and i i um, also book I for the uh, demo demo interview uh, that you have started mock interview for the candidates you did it with with mehul uh, the demo yeah 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 i i booked a call with mehul on 21 okay okay Cool, cool. Yeah, make use of that. Uh, it's a free mock test. Make use of that time. Uh, we have configured for 30 minutes, but we can go beyond. You can share your resume, take feedback from him also. So we're working as a team. Saurabh on our team, myself, a lot of other industry experts we are bringing in the next few weeks. So take help from these kind of uh, sessions or discussions. And if there is no shortcut, right? There is no... Uh, uh quick recipe that how we get into an uh, experienced uh, job you have to it's a process just like you know any game or any sport you keep building the uh, skill set keep enhancing your resume keep applying for the right opportunities and then if if everything falls in place then yeah it, it should materialize into uh, and then get into any entry level job anything that that helps you to get started don't focus too much on what should be my salary target or that sort of thing. Just get into it. And then later on, in a very short period of time, you don't need to spend uh, many, many years for you to be selective. Another six months, one year, you will start realizing that, you know, the skill set that you have built and what industry needs, everything, these, these things will start integrating together. The companies use a lot of tools, technologies. So anything you are learning, you will be able to apply on those jobs. You Things will be better uh, once you are on, on a job, basically. You learn so much, not directly working on those projects, but also your colleagues contributing. You're learning a lot of good practices from those discussions, stand-ups, and all those sort of things that, that are very difficult to do it outside. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. I will send that. Did you have a review? Yeah, yeah let's, let's take a look uh, offline. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody? I think having enough uh, knowledge about the topic will be good enough because it doesn't make a difference of what you were working in the past. Because I have been working as a technical support executive. I landed as a cloud engineer. I recently landed a job in SP Global as a ops engineer. I took like four months break. I was learning all of this and I think it paid off. Yes. So it doesn't matter what you have, what your resume, because I was an associate then. I was working yeah. on the service. Pradeep, if you can come on camera and explain your process, what changes yes. you brought in, it will be helpful Definitely. for everybody. Sure, let me do it. And we are on live on YouTube as well. Okay, I'll do it.
You you coming on camera? Or mm -hmm. what yes, I'm coming. Take your time, man. Am I visible? Yes, yes, but let me tell you something. Uh, hi, everyone. So, my name is Kundeep. Yeah, we need these kind of stories, right? So, if you have done something like Unfortunate mm -hmm. for me, like I am not in the mm -hmm. uh, that looking for job and going for interviews right now, like with God's grace, yeah. it's set, set up. So you have done a big achievement. So tell us about it. Like what was your process? How were you applying for different jobs? What was your learning process? How did you reduce the noise? Which tools you selected? So anything that you can share. Sure. Uh, so uh, as I said, I was working as a technical support associate earlier. Uh, one of my friend uh, helped me getting into the cloud. So he taught me Azure, first of all. So I learned it. I got the basics and everything. But I like AWS better. So I learned it on my own from Udemy. So I did the certification after that. And then I started giving interviews in small companies first. So that I get the hang of it. Like, what are the situations there? What kind of questions they ask? Like, multiple things happen when you try and get into the cloud. So I did that. Uh, so I, I cleared a good company. It is a good MNP. Uh, I worked there for almost like one year and six months. And then I got laid off uh, recently in March 31st. And uh, so I had an idea about the DevOps by then. So I took my time. Everyone was giving interviews who were uh, like laid off with me. Everyone got the job, but I was waiting. So I learned EKS, I learned Argo CD, I learned ETS, I learned Jenkins, GitLab. Circle CI, all of that. And I recently gave only like one interview and I got selected. It's a product based company. And I'm in that role now. I'll be joining soon enough. So you have seen quite so, a yeah. bit of uh, journey, like uh, uh, from, you know, from a support engineer to joining a company, then being fired and, yeah. then all, and now <laughs> getting into a product company. So, yeah. Right, right. Uh, okay. it, it took some time. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Where did you learn all uh, these skills? So you took through Udemy. I'm sorry, your voice is breaking. Right the question is, where did you learn these skills? Is it all through Udemy courses? I would say uh, I learned it through Udemy. I I got the interview experience from your videos and a couple of others on the YouTube. But if you talk about the learning, I've done like multiple courses on Udemy. I've done like two three courses on EKS. Just to get the proper knowledge, because when you go for an interview, they'll ask you multiple things, not only just the EKS cluster, they'll ask you, your, your course definitely helps. If they'll ask you about the deployments, what were the scenarios, what were the stages there, how you were managing secrets, what were the artifacts, how were you managing the certificates and all sort of that. So unless you do the hands-on experience, I, I'm, I don't think you can crack it. So this is like one good place. Where you, so I, I bought your previous videos also, and I have done the hands-on myself before sitting in that interview. So I would say it's a, it's a good platform. You just need to like give your time and you can definitely clear it. Yeah. It's, it's totally up to you guys how you uh, proceed with it because it is a production level kind of experience you get here. And because this is how they are, like how was your e cluster working, what nodes you were using, what issues you have faced, any errors you have faced. So when we work here, when we do this deployment, you'll get multiple 400, 503 errors. And that will help you in the interview because I was asked this question. Uh, so I have this route, now I have this traffic going from the internet to the uh, EKS cluster and I'm getting 503 error. So I knew because it comes with the load balancer. If the backend is not working, then it will give you this error. So when we do this hands-on, it will definitely pay off when you sit in interviews. It will be a big help. So I think everyone should do it. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> If I have to actually differentiate between an average person and uh, uh, somebody very good, I will ask what difficulties they had, what challenge they had. And if they have just theoretical knowledge, they will not be able to answer. They will, because they don't know what, what error they had, what issues they faced, right. uh, what are the issues with different tools and technologies? Why should we use, not use Terraform? When should we not use Terraform? So uh, cluster, when should not be used? So that sort of thing, 
evolve when you are actually doing hands on when you are mm-hmm. you know working on some project learning from that complex project that that the main uh, that will indirectly directly convert into your uh, it will help in the job uh, interview yeah even if you are not able to answer it in one go in first interview but you will understand okay this was the situation next time you will not go down on that situation and you will be able to answer it if it's not in first interview second will definitely pay off Good, uh, quick question. Yeah. <laughs> good. Uh, quick question. So first of all, congratulations, man, for all the struggles you've been through. And now you are you're at the place where you are uh, at the hot seat. You are telling your sharing your experience. So congratulations for that. Uh, quick thing. What I wanted to know the overall over of uh, period of time what exactly the time frame you have learned all these technologies and uh, what would be the overall you know time uh, you you took to learn all that so uh, i'm i'm good with learning i would say so uh, then also it took me some time so i started from uh, like kubernetes the basic one which comes from the google cloud and then i switched to eks and then ecs and all of that so i took like three good months but i mastered everything be it jenkins be it gitlab be it circle ci be it sonar cube be it jfrog be it artifact tree ecs eks i am good with all of that so it will take some time like give it like 2 3 months if you have enough time and it will definitely pay off so i did it like this only i learned first of all i set with bash scripting then ansible i did and then i did kubernetes and so i did docker first and then kubernetes so i i learned docker swarm also but i think learning eks will be good enough to crack a job so instead of going to the kubernetes itself i would say learn eks and that will be yeah. good enough to you get a job two two important points focus on uh, any managed uh, kubernetes cluster so you don't get into those problem that's why i'm insisting everyone in this project also if you yeah. are able to afford try to do it on any managed cluster not on mini cube and that sort of thing you will you will face unnecessary issues with mini cube and that sort of thing second in this project and also in the july project i saw everyone jumping to uh, jenkins and we saw in the demo right how difficult it was to set up the jenkins agent and lot of such issues whereas if you look at the gitlab file that i have you can actually select the right docker image so if you want to build a maven project gitlab allows you to pull a base image of maven and that's it it has everything all environment variables everything configured done for you if you have to work on say node js or any other technology you don't have to set up the working uh, that agent for uh, gitlab and get into all the complexity of it you pick the right image uh, to build that node js application dot net application anything you are building a docker uh, image so you pick the right image and it's free so add gitlab in such projects to your skill set as well and yeah. maybe next week a demo try to somebody try to build it using gitlab also as your devops maybe that that uh, it's be- easy it's it, it is the, it is basically on yaml so it's easy to uh, understand it's easy to do and you get 2000 minutes free on gitlab so yeah. it's all good it is working on cloud instead of like setting up your own runner it's uh, better you run it on cloud cloud so yeah it's easy yes and and it adds more skills right jenkins yes. will bring that skill that okay the hard way of setting up agents and uh, jenkins will be everybody's skill set but if you add GitLab, yeah you saying that you worked on G- gitlab in your previous project it will definitely be a plus for you it will be a plus point yes yeah. what what do you use uh, kuldeep in your product company uh i was working on circle ci so it's similar to gitlab yes so when i did gitlab also uh, it was similar we, we created that uh, config.ci yaml here it is uh, .gitlab hyphen uh, ci.yaml so it's similar and it works in the similar manner all of that build these differentiating skills you say that you have worked on gitlab and not just jenkins azure devops github actions it adds value <clears throat> yeah. what else uh, thank you so much uh, kuldeep uh, for coming and next uh, so ne- next i believe you should finish this project and show it to everyone how you have done maybe for yeah, i was busy in interviews but i <laughs> last one like last week only what are we doing so i'll finish this one uh, this week only 
and I'll be able to present it next week. If yes. it is. All right. Uh, anybody else has any questions? Kuldeep is here. Other people are can jump in. Kuldeep, uh, like uh, one question. Uh, like when you uh, changed from cloud uh, from technical to cloud engineer, uh, mm -hmm. did you mention the uh, that uh, in resume that you had that technical uh, support thing in your resume, or you just no? Let me tell you about that. Uh, so. Uh, I had that previous four years experience, all was technical support, but I told them that I've been working as the AWS admin. So they asked me questions on it. I, when I was sitting for interview, I learned Terraform by then only, like not very much, but I got the exposure on it uh, later on. But they asked me about GitHub, they asked me about Terraform, they asked me about AWS, and they asked me about Linux also. So when I was sitting in my first interview for cloud, uh, I was able to answer that and I was able to crack it. So I landed that job on those four skills only, basically AWS. Linux is basically basic because you need it for any troubleshooting you do on cloud. And then Terraform and GitHub was the extra one, which I learned by then. And then I was able to crack it. So it doesn't matter what you have on your resume, if it's help deck associate or a technical support associate or service desk associate, it doesn't matter. If you can answer the questions in the interview, if you can do well in it, you'll get that job anyhow. And I got 300% hike on that role from that technical support to the cloud one. <laughs> <When> <laughs> All skills are coming out. Uh, yeah. Like one question, like I have uh, one year of mainframe. Uh, I passed out last year. So I, I, I have learned all the basics. Uh, the, the thing I like is the practical. So can I take three, four months, uh, like resign and three, four months? I have no- I wouldn't say yet. you should resign. You, because you recently started your career, don't don't put any unnecessary gap in it. Spare time, nobody is saying that you need to do it 15 hours a day. Make it two hours, three hours or four hours, whatever you can spare from your time and do it every day. So if you do it consistently, uh, you will be able to do it. And within like three, four months, you can easily crack a job. It's not like that big Design of a deal. Is not a good option because then you get yeah. into career gap and all those issues uh, instead. Even if you are working as a desktop support or any kind of support engineer role or something, you you can easily justify uh, the way Kuldeep mentioned, right? You can justify it as a DevOps and cloud engineer. You will yeah. obviously have to back it with good skills. So spend some two, three extra hours per day, uh, maybe more on the weekend and don't resign. Resign is not a good option. Yeah. Well said. All right. Uh, what next? We then close the call and uh, get ready for the next week uh, project preparation, next week's activities. Thanks, Sandeep. Thanks for the time. Thank you so much, Kuldeep. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Sure. Okay, guys. I think we have been. Uh, studying for like two, three hours now. Uh, so let's close this uh, for this week and see you all next week uh, in the Zoom session. And what else? Bring any such questions towards the end of the session. We will try to take uh, these questions. Any success stories you have, if you're going for any interview, you want to share uh, any feedback from that, any industry knowledge or any, any specific challenge you face, bring any such, uh, chit chat in the end of the session and uh, we'll proceed the agenda very similar we'll we'll look at the success stories in that week what we have accomplished demonstrate and try to finish this project until this stage uh, that we are able to deploy the application microservices in the cluster database uh, service as well that that is the main learning uh, in this project so all your uh, persistent volume and all those things will start to come into picture. <clears throat> okay, uh, I am stopping the recording and I am closing the call. See you all next week. And we have the WhatsApp group. We can stay connected there. We can interact, resolve everybody's issues, work together. All right then, see you all. <clears throat>